Hello everyone, so in this video I'm going to be going over the basics of the Eris by NoSQL database. So if you're not familiar with Eris by basically it's an in-memory NoSQL database. So transactions and data storage is actually done directly in RAM versus, you know, first the disk. And since it's NoSQL, there's no definitive um, structure like traditional RDBMS systems like MySQL or MS SQL Server or Oracle. So I kind of want to just give like a brief overview of how the data storage and you know how to interact with Aerospike with their .NET clients. So um, without further ado, I guess I'll first show you how Aerospike is set up on on a Windows environment, which is what I'm running. So the um, instructions for Aerospikes install on Windows kind of go over, you know, how to install it in a virtual machine because it doesn't actually natively run in Windows. So if you've um, used Vagrant before, uh, things will seem a little bit familiar. But basically, you need to install. Um, two prereqs, Git for Windows as well as uh, Vagrant, and then you basically can just spin up uh, an image, which is um, basically Aerospike inside of CentOS. It's already prepackaged as a Vagrant um, VM, and if you go to the Vagrant Cloud, you can actually see the config. It's it's pretty pretty straightforward. Um, you should note that the only one thing I actually had to change was um, I couldn't actually get it to work with the default network settings. So what I did is under network and virtual box, I added a second adapter. I bridged it so it actually appears as another computer on my 192.168 network. So that was a pretty easy fix and I just port forward through Windows Firewall. Uh, the default port is port 3000 TCP. So once you've done that, you should be good to go. And it's actually just a, you know, it's a VM. So you can see it's, um, it's logged in and everything. So um, before I get to an example of the storage, um, I'll show you how, you know, things are accessed. So I wrote this pretty small, basic uh, C sharp program and using a .NET Core 2.1. That utilizes the Aerospike client, which is installed as a NuGet package. And it kind of just goes over some basic things. So reading records, writing records, and then deleting records. And to give you an overview of the structure of um, Aerospike, so you have namespaces, you have sets, you have bins, and you have keys. So to translate this for people who are uh, experienced with RDBMS, it's like a namespace is equivalent to, you know, the database itself. Um, you have sets, which are pretty much like tables. You have bins, which are the actual fields, so your rows and columns, and you have your keys, which is almost like, you know, a key in, like a primary key, foreign key, and, um, SQL, but not not really. So a key is basically the identifier that you use to grab data from a bin or bins. So inside of a bin, it's basically just a key value pair. And you can basically store anything you want in them. So let me just go over, you know, what that actually means. So let's... um. Start up my tool. So you're connected to the uh, Aerospike. It's not actually a cluster. I'm actually just running a single VM. You actually can cluster. However, I'm not actually sure if that's supported in Community Edition. But um, anyway, so let's try to read a record, for example. So you give it the namespace, and then you give it the set name. And then let's go to key. So this is um, 
a set that has um, some data for some stock symbols. So let's look up Apple. So you can see inside of um, or related to this key, here are the following bins along with their key value pairs. So I'll actually go over um, how this is done, you know, stored programmatically in a minute, but this is basically, um, you know, just a pretty simple way to see what's associated with that particular key. So that's reading the records, it's pretty simple. So if you want to write a record, it's also pretty simple. Um, my tool doesn't actually support uh, doing multiple bins at once, but like I said, I'm going to show you how that actually gets done programmatically. So if you want to write a record, it's pretty simple. Let's do it in the same set. So let's call it my test key, test bin, and then let's say one, two, three, four. So you want to read it. And then test key. You see it's got the the bin's name and then the value, so the key value pair. And then let's go ahead and delete this because we don't need that in there. Maybe equity set. It's test key. And then the record's gone. So that's a pretty brief overview of what this tool does. Um, I'm actually going to move it to my GitHub at some point in the future because it's actually hosted on a different repo um, for a different project I was working on. But it's going to be open source under my primary, um, one of my primary projects soon. So you'll be able to take a look at the full source code, but it's actually very basic and, you know, it doesn't support things like uh, authentication to Aerospike and things like that because um, I'm just using it locally so there's no authentication currently in place but it's a pretty nice way to play around with data uh, relatively quickly so that's basically the data retrieval component of how Aerospike works so let's go ahead and exit that tool and then let's switch over to a program that actually communicates with um, Aerospike. So this is the um, data load service I'm writing for um, a project called Pseudo Markets, which is basically a online open source um, paper trading platform. Paper trading is basically stock market simulation. So you can place trades against real market data without actually, you know, using your own money. Kind of test out your own uh, theories and just, you know, try to get uh, a, a stock market experience without actually, you know, spending any of your money. But anyways, um, so part of the data load service is it makes some API calls to two providers, IEX, Investors Exchange, and Alpha Vantage. And once it gets that data from our uh, aggregator, we have to write it to our Aerospike database. So you'll see this is the procedure um, to initiate that. So you have to create a write policy, and then you can set a timeout from there excuse me, you have um, to assign the key. So the key parameters are the um, namespace, the set name, and then the key. So in this case, the key is just a symbol. As we just saw, uh, apples was AAPL. And from there, you just create the bins. So the bins have um, the names and then so this is the key value pair. So this is the key and then this is the value for the bin. You can have multiple bins. You basically just create an array of bins and then using the client you just do a little uh, put call using the policy, the key, which is our basically the reference point in which we use to 
retrieve this data, and then finally the array of the bins. We do a little console.write line to show that um, the write was successful, and then we finally close the client. You'll see this thread.sleep is there because um, these calls are, are rate limited, so got to give a gap between getting all this data and writing it. So that's basically how the storage works. It's, it's actually pretty simple. This is, a, again, a very you know rudimentary, simplified explanation of how the data storage works. Of course, there's many more facets, such as you know specifying more details in the right policy, authentication to communicate with Aerospike in the first place. I'm not using any at the moment. And then finally, you know, defining a, a nicer way to create some of these keys and bins. In this case, I'm storing pretty, you know, small and simple bits of data. So it's not really too much of a, of a big deal in terms of storage and retrieval. And all I can say is it's, it's super fast. I mean, again, I'm not working with the biggest data set, but from my experience, you know, my VM only has assigned two cores and two gigs of RAM, but that data retrie the data retrieval and writing is just instant, regardless of if I'm doing a data load or if I'm actually doing queries, it's extremely fast. So if you're looking for a way to store data that doesn't require a lot of, you know, hierarchy, kind of like a traditional RDBMS system would provide you, even though you can sort of achieve that with smart design from the uh, client side as well as managing it, you know, on the on the database side, you can you can accomplish some pretty impressive things with Aerospike. But if you're just looking for a way to, you know, quickly dump some keys and values, it's not you know the most popular choice, unlike um, you know Redis or Mongo or anything like that, but for my experience, although it's the learning curve is a little bit high, it's definitely there in terms of performance. And then once you get used to using this C sharp client, it's actually pretty simple to access and write data. So this is probably one of a couple videos I'm gonna do over Aerospike. I'm actually kind of learning this myself, but I just want to do like a quick intro. So if anyone else is interested, you know, they can start playing with it too. So, as always, thanks for watching, and I'll see you guys in the next video.